Juan. <laughs> the Ocho Mitsuri Enu and Igusa story is now available. <laughs> this is Persona, uh, though, not Fire Emblem. And by the way, yes, we are going with P3 Best Girl. Are you awake? I'm sorry. I had turned off my consciousness to test the new equipment installed on me. Yes, that's why we use the emergency channel. We've been asked to go into action. Has something happened? Who sent the request? <laughs> yep. We'll brief you on the details in transit. Also, regulations say that the member with the lowest serial number is in command. Maybe <laughs> that's you. I'm in command? Are you sure about this? After all, I'm... You're well suited for it, in my opinion. Understood. May 1st, 2012. Of... Uh, 9.30. Men equipped with assault uh, suits and tactile vests line the concrete ground. Their urban camouflage and unmoving poses uh, give them the appearance of, order, uh, of an orderly line of rocks. Thirty minutes have passed since the special assault team took up uh, their position on the landing strip, surrounding the uh, stopped passenger plane. Their captain glares uh, is at the plane before uh, uh, he slowly turns around and looks at each of his men. And yeah, in order to get uh, closer to the true endings, we have to go uh, for uh, a, a Persona 3 character next. Every, they, uh, everyone wears ski masks. I thought it, uh, uh, it was Adachi as uh, the voice. It did sound similar to Adachi. Everyone, uh, every last one wears a ski mask and thick tactical visors to mask their identities. But he know is, but he knows them nonetheless. Tell me about the situation and make it quick. We don't have much time. One of the team members steps forward. The touchscreen in tablet in his right hand and has a summary of the case of the case on it. On May first, twenty twelve, around nine hundred hours, as the no wide body passenger aircraft headed for Kagoshima. Uh, sent out uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, a 7,500 uh, squawk code during uh, passenger boarding. Following uh, the signal, the captain reported uh, to the control tower that their aircraft had been hijacked. Since the uprising occurred uh, during the passenger boarding, only half the passengers, 168 exactly, had boarded. The ten crew member uh, brings a total of 178 hostage, uh, hostages uh, is thought to be on board. Some passenger uh, seat, uh, seated near, near the hatch had, uh, had succeeded in escaping. The following points were gained in from questioning them. Take care not to be seen by the hijackers. There are three hijackers, all of them covering their faces with ski masks. All of them are armed and with what seem to be pistols. From their voices and builds, they appear to be males. They all spoke fluent Japanese. Currently, the aircraft uh, in, the, uh, in station. Uh, uh, currently, the aircraft in question uh, moved uh, to the front uh, of the landing strip at the hijacker's insistence and stopped there. The authorities have attempted to negotiate with the hijackers uh, by radio but they have made, made no demands. The team member uh, finishes his report. The captain nods silently and addresses his team. There has been a plane hijacked in this country in over 10 years. None of us, not even me, have dealt with this before. Still, the procedure remains the same. Trust yourself, remember your training, and keep a cool head. The captain turns towards the plane again. Taking that as a cue, the teams um, scatter uh, to their specified posts to take up positions. The only thing I can do now is see what happens.
eventually 10, uh, 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 10 o'clock come, comes around. Half an hour has passed with no new developments. Repeated attempts to contact the hijackers have been made, but they have yet uh, to make any demands. Tensions are beginning to rise. The worst case scenario is that they have, have no need to make demands, that their objective is to see is the passenger plane itself. In this case, the team would be facing a large-scale terrorist attack. Talk to us. The captain mutters to himself, deep in thought. From the perspective of, uh, of, the, uh, of rescuing the hostages, uh, as any second that passes uh, without uh, it's learning the hijacker uh, jacker is a, uh, is a as objective as a second wasted. The captain and his team can wait uh, can wait in, uh, in hiding, but the same is not true for the passengers on board. For untrained civilians, extreme stress can le and easily lead to physical and mental problems. It's true not, not only for the hostages, but for the hijackers as well. When people lose their nerve, they tend to act rashly. The hostages will begin uh, to lose hope, and the hijackers will begin taking uh, it out on the hostages. An hour into the insta incident, anything could be, uh, be happening inside the plane. The captain could do nothing but glare uh, uh, as, the, uh, as the time ticked by. After 15 more minutes had passed, a slight change in the situation was reported. All emails and, pull and calls going through the stations near the airport being checked uh, are being checked, but uh, at the moment, no mess uh, messages are thought uh, to have been sent uh, from the inside of the plane. It is so good to hear the Persona 3 music again. It appears that the hijackers had confiscated all cellular phones. And for stand as per standard hijacking plans, but sure, there's a report from HQ. They picked up a transmission from one of the passenger cell phones. It's a smartphone with GPS, so they can tell it's inside the plane. Confirm those details for me. There are two possibilities: the hijackers are using pass uh, are using a passenger's phone to contact associates outside, or a passenger is contacting someone in secret. The latter possibility is more likely. More and more devices have communication capabilities now, making it extremely difficult for hijackers to remove uh, them um, entirely from play. And more uh, and the more hostages uh, there are involved, the more courageous they become, and the more likely they, they are to take risks. Unfortunately, more hostages involved means it's all the more dangerous to provoke, uh, to provoke the hijackers. Each individual, uh, individual hostage is worthless to them. The details of the transmission makes it uh, apparent that the situation is worse as than the team had assumed. The cell phone's owner is a man uh, in his 60s and first class. He signed up for a certain service after being diagnosed with a heart illness. It's a remote EKG monitoring service that uh, keeps track of the patient's heartbeat. A scheduled message was automatically sent to the patient's cell phone. The service provider promptly contacted the police, informing them that, um, that the man was in bad shape. His life is at stake if we don't wrap this up within the hour. Looks like we can't stall for time. Time to be an absolute badass. Panic spreads. A proposal uh, uh, for negotiations based on this fact and proposal to storm the plane are both considered. But because uh, only half the passengers are boarded, the situation inside the plane is uncertain, making and devising a tactical plan difficult. Though in, uh, if nothing is done, a passenger, a passenger will surely the, a, a passenger will surely succumb within the hour. A blunder like that must be avoided at all costs. That was the thinking that guided the police and its officials to make their decision. That same day at 10:30. What? Withdraw? This is a hijacking. What are you thinking withdrawing our people? Yes, I understand. Wait, what's going on? Orders are orders. We'll fall back at once. Get ready. No one understood the sudden withdrawal order. 
Why withdraw the team during a hijacking? No one on the scene agreed with the decision, but the order could not be overturned. The men here are uh, not uh, the brain, but limbs whose power is best put uh, to use precisely uh, by precisely following orders. Just then, another group approaches without a sound. Its members are dressed differently in suits and trench coats, but all of them are wearing black and sunglasses. At a glance, it's clear that, that they are tall, well-built, and used uh, to rough situations. With nearly 20 of them gathered in one place, they are imposing uh, despite their uh, uh, silence. They don't seem uh, to be airport personnel, but, uh, but neither are they known uh, to the police. But the captain uh, senses uh, they're in the same line of work uh, and, and approaches. His voice is laced with suspicion, but the man uh, at the head of uh, the group speaks dispassionately as, as, uh, as if he heard nothing. For the next half hour, we're in command of this scene. <laughs> they act, the man's actually called M.I.B. <laughs> you didn't answer the question. Who's responsible for this? That is none of your, your concern. Now, we'll, if you will please look into the pretty line. The, captain, uh, uh, the captain's tone unconsciously hardens. The group of men in black uh, cart uh, and one of their number uh, are in the rear steps forth. The captain, the captain can't stop him from himself from furring his brow. He can already sense uh, the unrest uh, spreading among, uh, amongst his team, who watches in silence. The one stepping forward looks a step, like a 17 or 18 year old girl. She is dressed in black and wears sunglasses uh, like those around her, but her slender build uh, is out of place. Her blonde hair stands out not uh, even more her in contrast as to you know, her all black outfit. The girl walks a few steps forward and removes her sunglasses. The captain and attended to appraise the look in her eyes, but only grabs in the but only gasps in the face of her crystalline blue. He quickly regains himself and frowns. The one in charge? Yes. Are you shitting me? There is no time to waste quarreling. The girl looks at him fearlessly, despite uh, its arm, uh, uh, despite the armed team uh, surrounding her. The, absurd, uh, the absurdity of uh, it all uh, helps uh, the captain get over his surprise. Her age and appearance uh, are most likely meaningless. She is clearly no ordinary girl. You're not even going to tell me who you're with. I'm with me. I cannot. So you expect me to hand over control of the scene to you without even telling me who the hell you are? I believe orders to withdraw have already been issued. The calm, sweet voice only irritates him. The captain closes the distance to the girl, and while he stops short out of grabbing her suit, he glares into those blue eyes from only inches away. I don't know what kind of juice you have with the brass, but are you ready to be responsible for the deaths of those passengers? But the passengers are not the one who need help anymore. Your protests are doing nothing to relieve the danger. Rescuing them as soon as possible is my, or rather, our duty. <sighs> the girl is completely unruffled as she speaks. It's like she's a machine or something. Certainly not. <laughs> the captain think uh, uh, the captain thinks more dumbfounded than angry. We too wish to save them. And by them, I mean, and by us, I mean me. For the first time, something like determination flickers within those crystalline eyes. After looking into them, the captain finds something akin to resolve and confidence in them. He steps back. Raising his right hand to his, uh, his chest, he shows the girl his watch. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you are dealing with your way beyond your pay grade. My advice, stand the hell down. <laughs> yep. Right. But you got exactly 30 minutes and not a second more. I don't even need five. Understood. 
after the girl nods, she gives the instruction uh, and to prepare uh, uh, Starikar uh, to the group uh, if she is leading. The captain's fist tightens nervously. Since there are, there are a few uses uh, for, uh, stair, uh, for a stair car, finally uh, moving it uh, in, in place may make, make the hijackers think that a strike team is getting ready to storm the plane. Oh, but a strike team is. A strike team of one. But there is no hesitation in the girl's actions. Well then, move in as naturally as possible while staying in their blind spots. Five minutes to deal with the hijackers. That means 25 minutes of playtime. <laughs> yep. Eventually, a ruthless, uh, uh, a ruthless uh, car advances slowly towards the passenger plane. The we can get without them noticing will be about 10 meters from the plane. Only 10 meters? Give me a challenge. That will be more than enough. <laughs> more than enough? What's the point of half-assing it like that? The captain's annoyance begins to turn into curiosity. Is she me replacing ang, the, uh, ang, ang, the SAT? <laughs> I guess I got you for 30 minutes. <laughs> then she must, uh, if she is replacing ang, the SAT, she must uh, have a plan uh, beyond simple brute force, but... Now, let's begin. The stair car stops. The girl gets out of the driver's seat. She walks slightly behind the vehicle, turns towards the passenger, uh, uh, the passenger plane, and squats down. The captain brings up a pair of uh, uh, binoculars to see what she, uh, she will do. At first, he assumes um, she is uh, just going to use is the stair car uh, as movement and as a decoy to send her team um, in from a different direction. Like humans, most vehicles uh, have, have significant blind spots above and beneath. Yet that doesn't seem to be her plan. Does she uh, does she plan to make, make her move while uh, using the stair car as cover? Is she possibly going to snipe them? The captain discards the possibility. It would be foolish to set up a sniper perch uh, at a low angle of elevation where the girl is now. While the captain mulls over the question, the girl makes an unexpected move. She appears to lower her stance slightly in one moment, and in the next, and in the next, she is no longer in sight. By the time the captain realizes she is running. And she has already reached the top of the stair car. Her slender body launches like a cannonball no, uh, from the top of the stairs. Yeah! She, she jumped? <laughs> P3 best girl! Even the sap member is uh, their surprise. The girl's leap uh, bark uh, it's a distance over 10 meters. It's clearly beyond the, uh, the abilities of a human being. I believe I can fly. <laughs> I want that outfit. I know, right? She looks awesome in it. Coming in the middle of a hijack, uh, King, the scene uh, seems even more surreal. The girl lands on top of the aircraft and stands as if nothing unusual ha oh, had, ha had happened. She looks at the aircraft beneath her and slowly turns her head to scan it uh, from back to front. It reminds the captain of the movements of a security camera. He knows it should be impossible, but wonders if she can uh, see through the plane's ceiling. Eventually, the girl seems convinced of something and begins walking. When she reaches the boarding hatch at the front, she moves her right hand to her back. The captain notices that a special knife, coated in, in, in gray from blade to hilt, is in her hand. What's she gonna do with that knife? The girl suddenly lowers her stance and slides down, uh, on, uh, on it, uh, down the side of the aircraft. Just as she's about to fall, she thrusts the knife uh, in, uh, into the uh, jam of uh, the hatch and dangles from it. This is crazy. She uses her left hand to pull the hat. Uh, 
uh, to pull the handle and then locks the hatch with ease. Once the thick, airtight door uh, juts out uh, of the aircraft, the girl nimbly jumps into the plane. The captain is shocked by her dauntless methods. Yes, just another Tuesday for the Shadow Operatives. <laughs> yep, this is par for the course. Actually, that's a pretty mundane compared uh, to what they usually deal with. The captain is shocked uh, by her dauntless methods. He begins to wonder if she intends to defuse the situation on her own. <laughs> the captain lowers the binoculars and faces the reality before him with his own uh, with his own eyes. Who in the world is she? The doubt that he had dismissed rides within him again. <laughs> and I look, and I did look it up that day. Did fall on a Tuesday. That is that is actually hilarious. <laughs> I gotta wonder if that's calculated. A warning light goes off in, uh, in the cramped cockpit. Two people no, they are notice it at once. One of them is the captain, sitting in the pilot seat. The other is the man holding a gun uh, to the back of the captain's head. All the fuse that pulls out of our gun, American style. <laughs> 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 the light is labeled hat open. Even an amateur could understand what that it means. The man suddenly tends to, uh, and, and stands ready at the passenger side door. He prepares himself uh, for uh, someone uh, to, char uh, uh, to charge through it. But he quickly regains composure and turns the gun back on the captain. The man casts irritated glance back and forth between the captain and the door uh, for a while, but eventually approaches the door. His gun points at, uh, his gun pointed at the captain. He cautiously cracks open the door and looks towards the, pas uh, the passenger seating. Just outside the cockpit is the first class section, but the passengers were gathered in the economy class at the time of the hijacking. First class is empty. The man squints. To ward off observation or worse, snipers are the window, or worse, snipers, the window covers were down. Coming in into the darkened plane and from the bright cockpit forces his eyes to adjust. But from the corner of his eyes, he sees a gleam of light shining and in that uh, shining in that uh, it's unlike the regular ones. And within that light is a silhouette. Before he can react, the silhouette figure closes the distance. The hand grabs the edge of the door and opens it with tremendous force. Ow! Two quick heavy blows follow. The man collapses without a sound. The captain turns around and, and, and is surprised to see the intruder, a blonde girl with an index finger to her lips, signaling silence. She first lays the man on the ground, and then removes the pistol from his hand. On closer inspection, it is only a model gun, supplemented with metal parts. The seam in between and the parts is, diff is in different places compared to a real gun. If taken apart, the disassembled pieces would look nothing like a real pistol. <laughs> The girl then takes the handcuffs from a small pouch on her waist and fastens the man's arm to the seat leg near the window. Even if he wakes up, he will be unable to stand. Kenki. Though no, a captain, uh, uh, the captain still looks as if he wishes to say something. The girl's eyes met his and insists on silence as, he le as she leaves. The curtain dividing first class and economy class is closed. The girl hides herself behind it and peeks through. There is a man in each of the aisles, one, uh, uh, one on the left and the right. Neither uh, seems to have noticed her. Dun, 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 dun. Remember, the safe word is pineapple. <laughs> But do realize when you say that, when you say those words, 
it's a large spiked fruit will be shoved up your anus. The passengers and cabin and crew are crammed into seats in the back. Everyone's placement matches as the readings of what uh, our heat sensors has picked up from above the plane. First remaining hijackers are closer uh, to first class. The man closest uh, to her is only a few steps away. He judges uh, that, uh, and she judges uh, that uh, that he can easily be disabled uh, that uh, she moves quickly. <laughs> <laughs> They both carry the uh, pistols, but they are uh, the same type uh, of down high uh, as the down hijacker. From what she can see, the, uh, these two are mere uh, model guns. <laughs> and that just runs hard you from me, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to try to pronounce that either. <laughs> I would have to sound it out. <laughs> the girl swiftly pushes aside the curtain and grabs the closest man, uh, uh, closer man's right wrist. A hijacker, caught off guard by the sudden uh, appearance of the slender girl, stops moving for a moment. <laughs> He's, uh, sorry, he, he surrenders any chance of victory he may have had. With a pain cry, he drops the pistol to the ground. The girl uses her grip uh, upon his right hand to put him on the ground, and smoothly pulls out another pair of handcuffs and locks his arms to, a pa uh, to the passenger seat. The man thrashes about, but despite his struggle, he is no better uh, than a worm writhing on the ground. A worm that I shall proceed to step on. <laughs> We are completely trained <laughs> changing the context of this operation. The last hijacker finally recovered uh, from his shock and aims his gun. The girl, no, no. <laughs> better than the longest, uh, uh, better than, uh, uh, better than longest word had uh, 189,819 uh, letters. It takes three hours to, uh, for, uh, for now, and for time, uh, time, holy crap. Um, the girl pulls a button and from the other man's sleeve and flicks it towards her opponent's face. The button travels at immense speed through it, it was launched, and though it was launched only from her fingers. The man uh, tried uh, to shield his face. But uh, he is too late. He grunts in pain when uh, he grunts in pain when the projectile strikes his forehead. The girl does not uh, uh, let the opportunity pass. She easily jumps um, over uh, the three uh, seat wide uh, center block uh, of seats with uh, one arm and grabs the man's right hand. There, she repeats the same procedure she used before. Their weapons are immediately seized while no, they are restrained on the floor. The passengers are only now grasping what has happened before their eyes. A murmuring chorus rises. Do not be alarmed. I have come to rescue you. <laughs> yeah, what the Michael? Why would you get that handed to him? Your safety has not been secured yet. So please stay calm. And remain in your seats. That's new cannon. She didn't throw a button, she threw a pineapple. The, pass the passengers erupt in cheer. In cheer. Agus, is, Agus is so badass, she, she resolved the entire situation without firing a single shot. Without a single shot being fired. <laughs> <laughs> Pineapple whip for everyone! <laughs> the passenger uh, is erupt in a cheer. There's a sporadic applause as well. But there is a slightly hysterical tinge to it. In reaction and to the tension of the situation. We were told someone requires medical assistance for their chronic heart illness. His name is... Just as a girl approaches uh, the center of the plane, 
She senses a male pass a pass a male passenger stand up from his seat. He is extremely calm and quiet uh, as he does so. The girl belatedly he picks up uh, of the incongruity. All of the other passengers are nervous. It is then that uh, she feels something hard pressing uh, uh, up against the back of her head. Dude, don't even try. It's not going to do anything. She knows uh, without uh, looking that uh, it is the muzzle of a gun. The nearby passengers' cry is of relief suddenly turn into screams. With your judgment to stay hidden until an opportunity arose. <laughs> The girl is unperturbed, and she continues to look straight ahead. The man stays silent and keeps the pistol pressed, pistol pressed to her head. <laughs> and I need Agus with a pine and have a top style haircut. <laughs> she knows there is no danger to being shot. She is not yet sure that... that <clears throat> But uh, she is not yet uh, sure uh, that he was the only one in hiding. Left with no choice, the girl now uh, accedes to his demands and moves forward. After about uh, ten uh, steps, another man stands up uh, as expected. And you too. <laughs> she is totally chill. <laughs> like this is such a non-threat to her. <laughs> The man doesn't answer. He slowly approaches from the front. The girl is now sandwiched between the front and the back. You're not trapped. Uh, I'm not trapped in here in you with you. You're trapped in here with me. At that moment, footsteps have, have sound from beyond and the curtain leading into first class. The two culprits both react at once, but it is too late. <clears throat> Ten men in, in, in black rush in, in at once from beyond in the curtain. While the girl had drawn in the hijacker's attention in with the scuffle, the stair car had closed in. <laughs> you want another save? Where shall we begin? <laughs> at first, they pinned down the, and the man standing in the front. The narrow passage gives the man behind her a short uh, uh, reprieve, but it doesn't last long. The moment, uh, the moment, and he lowers uh, the hand and uh, gripping the pistol in order to escape, the girl grabs his wrist. So focused was he on the man uh, who burst onto the scene that he forgot uh, that uh, the threat the girl posed. He is immediately uh, tripped and restrained when uh, he falls on his back. The girl stands up and looks around. Anyone else? <laughs> if there were any more hijackers inside the plane, this would be their last chance to make a stand. But no one rises from their seat. He glances. Uh, she glances towards the men in black, and they nod uh, back in an acknowledgement. It seems the crisis has been averted. Carefully keeps her thoughts from appearing on her face and gives an inner sigh of relief. Soon afterwards, the sweeper team gives a report confirming that the aircraft is secure. The girl works with the cabin crew to arrange transport for the man with the heart illness before she steps out for a moment. She stands on uh, the stair car and turns uh, on the blue uh, designator light, waving it uh, in circle uh, towards uh, the SA, uh, uh, towards the uh, SAT's position. It is a signal that the crisis is He's over. <laughs> Told you I didn't even need five minutes. Only receiving in the sig uh, on receiving the signal. The sat on standby start, uh, start talking amongst themselves. It hasn't even been five minutes. There should have been at least three hijackers. <laughs> I actually called the, the, the minute. I actually called the number of minutes. I didn't even remember that detail. You know what they remind me of is those guys. Like men in black or something. 
Yes, good. Now please look. Now please in, uh, look into the pretty light. Captain, who are those people? Is that one even human? <laughs> yes. I mean, again, technically, he, he, I guess is closer as uh, has become closer as uh, the human than and any other uh, robot character in history. The captain sighs re with reluctance. This is just a rumor, but I've heard that the higher ups formed an unofficial security group in conjunction with a certain corporation. A lot of this looks so badass, and then you, and then you see what's obviously Junpei there with the slouch and the, the backwards cap. It's supposedly for cases that are a little strange. I hear they have some official standing with the police too. Though it's all some private enterprise, so technically there's no authority involved at all. What? But this is Japan we're talking about. A search and destroy unit that answers to no department and keeps no records. I've heard them called shadow operatives. He turns on his own blue light as a signal of understanding and waves and waves it left and right. The response light comes from up ahead. The girl then uh, sees the captain and uh, spreading his arm and uh, is in a shrug and smiles for the first time. She feels slightly bad for them. Her team may, uh, it may have shamed them, though uh, they had done nothing wrong. I should apologize to them later. But then, out of the corner of the girl's eyes, near the entrance uh, uh, of the girl's eye, Near the entrance of the, uh, of the luggage carts, at the corner of the building, a figure catches her attention. A girl? Hello. And I have noticed that is the same name, uh, that is the same dread uh, that, uh, that, uh, that I guess wears when you, when you first meet her in Persona 3, which I think is a really cool detail. Well, at least on the boys' end, and uh, didn't... Uh, Oh no, she still wore that dress uh, as on the girl uh, on uh, the uh, the girl's storyline too. <laughs> Super elites. Wanna play some baseball? <laughs> you already said typo. <laughs> the girl seems to be about her uh, her age and is wearing a plain cape-like dress. For some reason, her appearance feels unsettling. To begin with, given the heightened security, the parking entrance uh, should be uh, strictly sealed, yet the figure looks like it's a billion. Um, may I check on something? The girl called uh, to the SAC captain over the radio. Noticing some slight interference, she looks down uh, to adjust uh, the frequency dial. What is it? If you look towards my left, in front of the luggage loading bay is... But during the moment she looked away, the figure disappeared. She's not there. That can't be. The girl looks around, but the figure is nowhere to be seen. Where could uh, she have gone in this open uh, space, with nowhere to hide? Oh, I... I'm sorry. I was apparently seeing things. Getting re uh, ready uh, uh, for dinner, uh, so... no. Uh, Oh, I'll anyone and uh, I'll see uh, anyone later on stream tonight. And I don't know if I'll, I'll be able to make it because it's quite uh, uh, because it's quite late for me. Uh, it's going to be quite late for me when I'm done. And uh, but uh, um, maybe maybe I'll be able to drop by. The girl shuts the radio off. Who was that just now? Was I truly seeing things? With those questions in mind, the girl uh, tries to remember the figure's appearance in detail. Only then does she realize the cause of her unease. That light blue dress uh, the figure wore. It was very similar to the one uh, she herself uh, had once. It's cool I might uh, still be streaming when you normally sign on uh, for the day. Hey, uh, 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 cool, so no, uh, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll can't uh, she then. It reminds her of those days when she did not uh, yet have a heart.
The girl puts those thoughts aside and returns to the aircraft. The mission does not uh, uh, then end. Uh, see you later, Ayumu. Uh, the mission does not end and with the cult culprits in custody. In truth, along with defusing the situation, securing the safety of one particular passenger was her highest priority. This fact was not uh, revealed yet. Uh, was uh, this fact was not revealed uh, to the SAT. The passenger was originally seated in first class, but would uh, have been uh, forced to move. The girl looks carefully through the restless passengers. It is not long before she finds the face she seeks. Looking relieved, the girl walks towards the passenger in question. Are you all right, Mitsuru-san? <laughs> I guess. I didn't think you'd be the one to come. Yep. The woman who answered uh, has, has, has long and uh, shining hair and would uh, make, make an impression on anyone. Even sitting in quietly in her seat, uh, her refined appearance makes her stand out. But I guess knows the woman well. In fact, I was surprised <clears throat> to be called on to deal with something like this. The suspects made no demands. What were they after? At first, I thought I was summoned because you were their target, Mitsuru-san. The higher-ups must have thought the same thing and panicked. Especially considering there's cargo on that plane they wouldn't want made public. Hmm, wait a second, that cargo... Is something wrong? This hijack seems strange now that I think about it. They made their move before takeoff, which is odd timing. And they forced the boarding announcement to be stopped. I thought maybe it was their way of trying to pull it off with a small team. Are you saying that rather than a passenger, they were after that cargo? Hmm. It's true that no one would consider the unloaded luggage during a hijacking. I guess I need you to check on my things. Though if I'm right, it's already too late. In response, I guess instructs her team via radio to secure all luggage and uh, transport routes. Moreover, she requests a search to ensure that no cargo has been taken. Even if you're right, why would they be interested in your belongings? My usual cargo wouldn't be worth hijacking a plane over. <clears throat> but I was carrying something... sensitive this time. Normally, if they wanted it, they'd have to bypass a Carrillo facility's security or attack the vehicle transporting it. I love how stoical uh, Mitsuru is about uh, the situation. <laughs> Like this, uh, this is uh, like a situation, then, and, and like if no, uh, the only reason she didn't do anything herself was it could have made things bad. But by doing it this way, they can divert the entire country's attention with a few model guns. Mitsuri smiles. I just can tell uh, that uh, she is impressed with her audacity, despite herself. Mitsuru-san's cargo, sensitive belongings for a vacation. Ah, uh, I understand. Hijacking a plane out of a desperate desire for undergarments. This incident will surely go down in history. <laughs> Conclusion! Mitsuru's eyes bulged at the unexpected comment. What? You're jumping to conclusions. It's not sensitive in that way. Besides, my underwear is in this bag and... <laughs> That's it. Enough about underwear. <laughs> mm. <laughs> the ultimate panty raid! <laughs> she forces a cough and steers the conversation and back on track. That would be hilarious if that was actually the case. More accurately, my cargo contained items from Ergo Research. My trip to Kagoshima was partly vacation, but also to oversee their transfer to Yakushima. The official name of Ergo Research uh, is the Kurija Ergonomics Research Lab. Both Mitsuru, uh, Mitsuru and Aiga uh, have many bitter memories associated with the name. A pole hangs in the air. But a radio transmission from one of Aiga's team and, and cut uh, the moment short. Aiga speaking. I see. Understood. <laughs> Mitsuru, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, that, that joke's still sticking in my head. <laughs> Mitsuru looks at Aiga as questioning, questioningly as she, and she nods. It's as you suspected. They found that one of the boxes scheduled for transport has gone missing. I thought as much. 
With a small sigh, Matsuru rises from her seat. We must get it back, I guess. The rest of the team can finish up here. I need you to come with me. I guess inspect next Matsuru's face carefully. Will you be joining the search as well? Well, I am personally involved, so yes. In other words, you will officially rejoin the unit and participate in this mission. <sighs> Oh, and by the way, I guess it's canonic uh, is canonically bisexual. To be more direct, is it accurate to say that you are abandoning your vacation? Mature sighs with some exhaustion. I guess interprets her silence as approval. Then I hereby transfer command <clears throat> authority to you, Mitsuru san. Regulations state that the member with the lowest serial number is to take command. And since you are member number one, the official leader of the Security Department Shadow Response Unit, also called the Shadow Operatives. <sighs> I had a feeling I wouldn't be able to enjoy this vacation for long. <laughs> Traveling with cargo no, from Ergo Research suggests that her vacation was neither relaxing nor cheerful. But I can't allow anyone to be hurt again by the things we, the mm -hmm. Kirijo Group, created. We'll get this cargo back at all costs. Oh yeah, we know all about what uh, uh, what the Kirito group was, uh, was doing. Mission or no mission, I'm making it a personal priority. Understood. I just answers loudly and snaps off uh, f uh, f the police sal uh, salute that she finally gotten the hang of. I am I guess. My official name is 7th Generation Anti-Shadow Suppression Weapon. As my name implies, I am not human. I am a humanoid weapon, essentially a robot. Though with the right clothes, a surprising number of people well, cannot tell the difference. I was created in a research lab owned by one of the world's, world's, world's foremost conglomerates, the Carrijo Group. I was made uh, to uh, exterminate uh, the certain enemy. They are called shadows, monsters born from um, people's repre repressed emotions, granted dark life. Shadows can only be defeated by those with uh, the special powers of, uh, of personas. One's persona is said uh, to be the power to wield uh, the shadow within. There are two sides of the same coin. The one cannot have a uh, persona if they do not uh, have a heart. I was given a mind to artificially develop a persona and a body to uh, be close to that of a human so that my mind could maintain a personality. A heart designated for battle. Now, a body designed for battle. I did endure some suffering, uh, suffering becoming, and because of my original purpose. But I now have, uh, have a place where I belong, somewhere I can make full beneficial use of my powers. That is the security department. The shadow uh, uh, that is the security uh, uh, department shadow response unit. Our nickname is the shadow operatives. The Shadow Operatives were formed um, at, Mishuru, at Mitsuru Kurijo's directive. She is, is the scion of my creators, the Kurijo, uh, the Kurijo Group, as well as the one uh, who has been given full responsibility for handling the Shadows. And goddammit, Junpei! Our directive uh, is to identify the resolve, of in, uh, the resolve incident uh, involving Shadows. We do this by, uh, by eliminating them. All our members are Persona users who have, uh, have similar qualifications. During operations, our guidelines state that the member is, is with the smallest number or, or, that the member with the smallest number has command. The number that I was issued was five. Though I am not human, I am treated as a member uh, as a member and not a piece of equipment. Anyone who, who does will have hell to pay. Moreover, uh, my number uh, is in the single digits. It's possible that uh, there will be missions like today where I must take command of dangerous operations. In other words, I am recognized as having the same life and dignity as humans. Well, technically you do. 
Because Batsuri-san and the other Naz have such trust in me, I want to repay that trust with the results. There is another reason I am working my hardest on this case. Soon after the hijacking was resolved, the stolen cargo was identified. Its content surprised me. The fifth generation anti-shadow suppression weapon. The unit named Labrys. She is one of my sister units. She was sealed over a decade ago and has been in storage and, uh, and other uh, art uh, with other artifacts ever since. Labrys, a humanoid weapon just like me. It is possible that she has a heart. And if she does, as I want to save her before uh, she is misused. This is a mission, yes. With them, but more than that, I feel it is a duty on its carry out. The next day, May 2nd, 2020, uh, 2012. We wanted to pursue the vehicle carrying uh, Labrys as soon as, as the hijacking was over. But it, uh, its complicated uh, routes made it hard to track. Due to the sensitive nature of the cargo, it is difficult to set up, uh, up large-scale traffic checkpoints. Fortunately, the license plate number was determined quickly, and we got a rough uh, estimate of its destination. Our headquarters were moved uh, to a police facility. Uh, Mitsuru uh, san and, and our team are sorting uh, out the situation to plan... Uh, uh, to plan for an operation. Interrogation of the suspects? It's begun, but all of them are claiming that their memories at the time are very foggy, so they've been sent in for evaluation. The psychologists who interviewed them think it's possible they're not lying. So none of the five have any memories of what happened during the hijacking? Normally that would seem preposterous. There may have been some hypnotic effect, but even then... We're dealing with someone after materials from Ergo Research. They'll likely be very well informed about shadows and the mind. Knowing that, it doesn't seem so strange. It would also explain the extreme lengths they went to to create a decoy. What else do we know? Another uh, team member answers Mitsuri-san's question. Since the cage storing the fifth generation is too large to transport by personal auto, we narrowed our search to large vehicles that left the airport. That, combined with the testimony from our observer and data from the transmitter, allowed us to pinpoint the vehicle in question. The police are already pursuing it via the end system. This is the most recent photo. He hands the tablet to Mitsuru-san. area. Wasn't this the place where... Yes, our routine investigation last year rated the potential shadow activity in the area at level 4. It seems that the culprit in this case has had prior knowledge of, sh of the shadows after all. If that is true, we must use extra caution. Many people do not know about shadows, though they are, are enough of a threat uh, to possibly destroy the world. Then again, I experienced that for myself three years ago. If someone is trying to manipulate them, we must prevent it at all costs. Let's talk about the stolen fifth generation unit. I guess, as the seventh generation would be her younger sister. A sister? My older sister? I'd like to know why she was sealed. Fifth generation anti-shadow suppression weapon, Labrys. The records show her to be the first model fitted with an artificial personality. In other words, she has a heart? There's no knowing if it was developed enough to call it that. She seems to have been made to gather test data rather than actual field use. What are her combat capabilities? She wasn't given firearms, since her regulatory system was inadequate. So she was instead loaded with some kind of special equipment. Unfortunately, the majority of the records pertaining to her are missing, which means that's the extent of our knowledge. Apparently, Mizuru's grandfather sucks at keeping records. Special equipment. We also don't know why she was sealed. Many of the documents regarding the old Ergo research were lost probably to cover up incriminating evidence. We don't even know what she looks like. All we do know is that she was a life-sized android. We'll just have to find out along the way. 
Mitsuru-san swipes her fingers across uh, the tablet a few times and shows it to an aide. I'll need these three individuals' cooperations. I'd like to join them in the field. Are you sure about this? Try not to make a scene when fetching them. Not all of them are part of our organization. The aide nods his assent and returns to its station. Mitsuru-san then and turns her gaze on me. Marcus, frankly, I think we can assume that there'll be combat involved. Will you be alright with that? So Mitsuru-san doesn't and say it out loud, but I, uh, I understand what she means. Our highest priority in, the, in this operation is to stop the culprit uh, to, and, and mitigate any, any associated danger. Not to rescue Labrys. Of course, we will strike. Uh, we will strive to accomplish both. But in the worst case scenario, we must uh, consider the option of destroying Labrys, destroying a sister unit. It will be a painful experience if she too has a heart. Thank you for your concern, but I'll be fine. I will do my duty. Mitsuru-san uh, says nothing uh, anymore and silently well, nods. Once we can confirm our target is headed to Inaba, we'll depart at once. May 3rd, 2012. As we get ready to depart for Inaba, Mitsuru-san and, and I go over last-minute details inside, uh, the, inside the police station. Mitsuru-san is absorbed uh, with issuing instructions over uh, the cell phone she is holding. Pessimism seeps into my heart as I wait. I begin muttering to myself. Will we be able to find Labrys? My sister? Hmm? Mitsuru-san's uh, surprised voice make, makes me ri realize how unlike, the, uh, how unlike me these doubts Will are. Will be able to save her? Isn't that what you really want to ask? <laughs> Don't worry. As I mentioned to Akihiko, fighting Labrys is not our priority. The reason I formed this shadow operative team is to save lives. We will find her, whatever it takes, and bring her back. We can do this. Yes. I'm sorry to be so pessimistic. Those feelings you have for Labrys? You should tell her when you see her. Mm. I will. Friends bound by trust are irreplaceable indeed. I hope that Labrys will become one as well. Eventually, the preparations are made and our limousine departs on its journey to Enaba. That evening, we are in Enaba now and traveling down a Midtown street. Though it is called Midtown, it is very different from an urban environment. It is quite. It is a quiet rust. Uh, it is a quiet rustic town. The vehicle we are targeting uh, is easily discovered. The transmitter uh, that was attached to it uh, when it left the airport uh, is, luckily for us, still active. I'm actually going to go for another bio break. Uh, break uh, quickly. Hey, give me a sec. Um... I return. Um... Well. But the vehicle now has been abandoned and, and the cargo is gone as well. To trace the further, we must learn why uh, the culprit came here. Specifically, we need to know uh, the details of what happened last year. Though this is already, though this was already assume, uh, assumed, so we have a plan. Mitsuru-san ordered uh, the driver to park nearby. However, this poses an unexpected problem. Our vehicle is a long black eight-door limousine. It'll stand out in this countryside town, no matter where it's parked. Mitsuru-san, our activities are supposed to be undercover, correct? <laughs> yes. <laughs> For undercover missions, it will be necessary to keep all personnel and vehicles from being noticed. Right. <laughs> Mitsuru-san, may I say something that I've been meaning to say for a while now? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Understood. <laughs> she just knows it's out of place. All I told them was to give us a car with enough space. <laughs> they went above. Uh, uh, they went above and beyond the call of duty. Wherever we go, people peer near into the windows out of curiosity. We avoid the public eye as much as possible, and finally park uh, in what looks like a good site for vehicle disposal on the outskirts of town. Um, our contact has arrived. Then I notice a middle-aged man in a gray suit standing out outside of the window. I recognize his face. He is one of the three collaborators Mitsuru san uh, con uh, contacted before our departure. I scoot over uh, to the door and open the window. Oh, hi. This was not our designated meeting area, yet he has discovered us. Suddenly, something not un unlike exasperation. <clears throat> Suddenly, something not unlike like, exasperation or disappointment appears on his face. You want to know how I did it? Hey, Kurosawa! <clears throat> the coffee interrupts us. <laughs> we appreciate your cooperation, Detective Kurosawa. Mr. Rutsan gets out of the vehicle while I'm bow and slightly bows. Three years ago, when and we were still fighting shadows in secret, Detective Kurosawa worked and acted as a police officer on a nearby police box. He believed in, uh, that our in intentions were good and supplied uh, us with uh, and supplied us with certain conveniences under the table. His job made this risky, but he always acted on behalf uh, of what he, he believed to be just. He's just that as many uh, he's he, he said this many times while supporting us in secret. He is a strong man, one who always acts on his beliefs. But now our organization is an official government and sa government sanction. He can now cooperate with us without being considered a dissident. In fact, now that Kurosawa-san's prior uh, actions are justified, he's being promoted uh, for his expertise. I have heard uh, that he is now you know, a plain in a plain clothes to, uh, detective working at uh, the central precinct. Long time no see, miss. I guess, was it? Indeed. It has been a while. I mean, you've, uh, back to, uh, you've interacted uh, mostly uh, with one guy two years ago, but... <laughs> but then again, uh, he did uh, kind of interact with uh, I guess, uh, during the answer chapter. Kurosawa-san uh, fixes uh, his eyes on uh, Mitsuru-san and me. It is faintly awkward. We are both dressed for combat, and I'm not wearing any clothes as with, as, uh, to cover my true form. Sorry for staring. A humanoid weapon. I was skeptical when I heard, but seeing you in person doesn't leave any room for doubt. I'm sorry that I kept it hidden back then. <laughs> it's alright. It would have caused more of a headache if you'd gone around looking like that. <laughs> Hearing him say that, I cannot help but smile. So you laugh like that makes it harder to believe you're a machine. I shouldn't make you stand while we talk. Please, get in. Ah, oh, sorry. I haven't seen you in a while, so I had a lot to say. Mitsuru-san asked Kurosawa-san to collect information on the serial murder case that occurred in this town last year. Um, we are there about at time, but I am going to go. No, I'm going to go until the next save point, and then we'll no, and then we'll call it. When background investigations were carried out across Japan at at the end of 2011, the, uh, this region uh, showed high readings of shadow activity. But although it was investigated, there were no effects apart from um, slightly unnatural weather. Then again, what if something happened uh, that was uh, just too hard to detect? Mitsuru-san suspect, uh, uh, suspects that, uh, that the serial murder case this was related to these shadows, and asked Kurosawa-san uh, to have uh, the local police force share their reports. 
we could have uh, he could have we could have requested them directly but what uh, we want uh, to what what we wanted would not uh, be the surface information found in the investigation records there are limits to what an unofficial unit uh, cloaked by authority can do with a direct request i found out quite a bit regarding the case you had me look into first i reviewed the report on the incidents from last year one of the suspects mentioned the word persona. I lock gazes with Mithurasan. So what went on here last year? It's probably related, but I wasn't done there. Parts of this guy's testimony were even more outlandish. If you can take what's in the record at face value, it seems Persona users can enter TVs within the Inaba region. Enter TVs? What does that mean? It means it's the reality show. Just what it sounds like. You physically stick your body into the screen and go inside. He claimed there was another world in the TV, and dropping people inside it was the method behind last year's murders. This all sounds rather absurd. I'm surprised it was included in the police report. We dealt with a tower that would come uh, that would uh, appear uh, in a high school at exactly midnight. It isn't that outlandish. I got in touch with the detective in charge at the time and said the same thing. Apparently, the report was filed by a young partner of his at the time. He'd entertained the wildest <clears throat> testimonies like this one. He sounds like quite the oddball. If this was what really went on, the police would have had no chance cracking it. But that Detective Dojima is one shrewd guy. Even with all the supernatural hocus pocus surrounding the case, he mm. caught the culprit. Kurosawa on size. He seems to be tired. That's all I have for you right now. I should be going. I doubt either of us has time to reminisce over the old days. <laughs> it's funny though. I thought the fighting was over, but you guys surprise me every time I see you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Officer Kurosawa. Uh. Why don't we at least see you off? Oh, that's all right. I've got my own car. I doubt my department would appreciate your tastes. <laughs> if I ever showed up for work in something like this, I'd be the talk of the force until the day I retired. He opens the door and exits the vehicle. He gives a short farewell and leaves without turning back. Mitsuru-san, this could be bad. Our sense of social aptitude is in question. <laughs> Ugh, can't deny that. <laughs> um, what should we do now? Uh, yes. First, we'll need to test the claim that Persona users can enter TVs. Hearing this makes me realize something. Although I had called it a vehicle on the disposal site, looking around, I can now see uh, that uh, there are also household electronics. Like make you know, refrigerators discarded here uh, as well. In a corner is a stack of TVs. There is a discarded TV over there. If the environment does not matter, we can use it to test the phenomenon. I voluntarily get out of the vehicle. Wait, I guess. I just noticed my mouse was in the way. Sorry. Don't worry. I'm just going to touch it. Nothing could possibly go wrong, right? <laughs> I extend my right hand and touch the screen and of the biggest TV I can see. My fingers brush the glass screen. But although I may seem him to touch it, I feel no resistance from its surface. I push my hand forward a little more. A weak ink light runs across the screen and my forearm sinks into it. Rings of light spread from the contact of my arm, rippling like a water across a pond. <laughs> hey, Robin. And yeah, I'm doing I'm doing the Persona Arena story on on Sundays. Interesting. It's exactly as the police report said. What's it like inside? Do you feel anything? Not particularly. No. Wait a moment. My sensor detects a sensation I've never felt before. But the knowledge of what it has already been... Uh, uh, but my knowledge of what it is has already been recorded within me. Is it your first time playing the story mode? Actually, I played the story mode um, 
when I originally got it on PS3, though, you know, keep in mind that was a year, no, um, a year uh, after no, no, uh, America got it because uh, of the crapshoot its its release was. As, um, but uh, yeah, I have played it, and it's just been a long time, and, and I don't remember no, all that much of the story. But I'm I'm going I'm going through it as um, as efficiently as I possibly can, and which is why we're on Igus's story right now. That's a long time ago, almost has almost basically the yeah, first playthrough. Yeah, pretty much. But I do remember a lot, or a lot, and and uh, for the uh, for this story, we are P three best girl. I love Igus. It's the same as mine. It's hard to say definitively since this is my first encounter with it, but I believe this reading is from a personality module. Does that mean our retrieval target is inside the TV? Huh. Sounds like fun. I hear a voice has come from an unexpected direction. Mitsuru and uh, San and I he, he look towards it. What we see is a silhouette wearing hang, hang a low hood that covers his eyes and a tattered cape. It billows is in the wind, looking hang, just like a character in a western movie. He is standing atop a mountain of trash, his arms crossed. Is that Akihiko? <laughs> he jumps down nimbly and, and walks towards us. He didn't show up at the rendezvous point, so I went looking and found you here. <laughs> this whole TV thing is pretty interesting. The only thing I kind of have to complain about with this new design of Akihiko is that apparently is apparently he's grown allergic to shirts. I would never uh, forget the man laughing so fear uh, fearlessly. Like Mitsuru-san, he is a friend and I once fought al uh, alongside Akihiko Sonata. He was a student and boxing champion and in his school days, and a staunch ally, powerful even without his persona. He is also you now our second collaborator, uh, collaborator on this case. Who's your favorite character in all the, in this game's cast, by the way? If that's kind of a uh, that's kind of like, like a mix. Like I love Iga. Uh, it's like I loved her in Persona uh, in Persona Three. Uh, um, I do love uh, Yukiko, whose story we uh, just uh, finished. Uh, so no, um, though Marie is my favorite uh, character in Persona Four. Or uh, after Gold, after Gold, or I played Golden. And and in this game, I totally made Labrys. It's been a while, Akihiko-san. Yeah, good seeing you. Akihiko, what on earth are you wearing? Just what were you doing overseas? <laughs> Labrys is good, and I feel like they did her story well. Yeah, like her story is so... From um, what I remember of her story, like it had such an impact like, that's, like, that it's so emotionally driven. I love it. And I do love uh, that uh, she's like one of the main characters uh, uh, in the Ultimax story. Hmm? Well, didn't I tell you that I was on a training expedition? Don't tell me you came here from the airport like that. Does the concept of keeping a low profile mean nothing to you? <laughs> Yeah, it's easy to get emotional when you go through her story. Yeah, really. Like it just makes it just makes you hate it, um, Mitsuru's grandfather even more. Mitsuru-san, I believe we have lost the right to complain about that. Mitsuru-san sighs at annoyance. Ah, yeah, Takahiko-san was on a training ex expedition overseas until this morning. As a result, his appearance is slightly, no, very different from the last time I saw him. But his, his aggressive personality and love, uh, uh, and love of, ch of a challenge seem to be you know, the same as always. He gives a cocky smile and smacks his palm um, with his fist. Anyway, we can get inside from that TV, right? And what are we waiting for? Still the same Akihiko. 
We don't know the situation inside yet, and we'll need a secure means of getting out. So what? If we want to get this Labyrus back, someone has to go inside, right? Well, that's... Our target hijacked a plane to throw her into a TV in this town. If we sit on our hands, it's possible we'll be put in serious danger. Akihiko-san steps towards Matsuro-san as if pressing her. We're different from how we used to be. We made the choice to fight shadows as professionals. I'm gonna uh, lurk, but I'll have you uh, uh, stream on and as it works, so I'll be here listening. And, and, and that's fine. We are going to end the stream um, um, soon anyway. I'll see if I can get a battle in. That's why I traveled around the world and trained harder than ever. And now that something's actually come up, you're hesitating? We agreed to do this. I'm ready to stake my life on the mission. Yeah, sorry, I can't, no, I can't like, extend it uh, too much, uh, especially at this time, because, uh, um, uh, because uh, it does get, uh, it, is, it is getting pretty late, and I'm, uh, and my room is right next to my mom's, I don't want to uh, make too much noise. Akihiko-san's opinion is a bit strong, but he is not incorrect. I could be Akihiko- uh, it could be Akihiko-san understands that being slightly forceful is his role. Because Mitsuru-san takes caution seriously. As the ultimate authority in this case, she frequently second-guesses uh, second herself. But I have seen Akihiko-san's words cut through her, her hesitation in the past. Uh, yeah, uh, no problem. Um, I look forward uh, to seeing you uh, when uh, I look forward to seeing you in more stream. Um, 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 like uh, I'm streaming now at oh, uh, it's around 7 p.m. my time. It might be a little late though because uh, that tends to be around when we have uh, supper, and and it may be even uh, a bit later uh, if it's my turn to do the dishes that night. It shows uh, the trust in Mitsuru-san uh, is not. Uh, it shows the trust in Mitsuru-san not uh, to make decisions in error. All right, wait right here. I need to go make a phone call first. Okay, but make it quick. And they get, and the P3 team gets their own and and the FMV for this. Wait here in the car. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> if we all barge in and something happens, we'll be devastated. Now that you mention it, at least one of us should be staying behind as well. I am not staying. <laughs> us three will be plenty. We'll end this in a flash. No problem. <laughs> the same as always. Although, huh? we have no idea what might be waiting for us on the other side. Don't get careless. Right. <laughs> this situation, it brings back memories. <laughs> Memories of climbing an absurdly high tower. Again, super psyched for P3P coming to PC. Why hey, Nighthoda, how's it going? going on <laughs> okay as much as I would uh, like to get uh, to um yes can't wait I mean, I played p3 AP when I was younger but I lost uh, the game so I can't and wait, not having to emulate it, and, and, and yeah, I love uh, I love P three P. I played it uh, like quite a few times.
I, no, I do hope no, that they may, um, that they at least incorporate the answer chapter, because I feel that was, that, that's like important uh, to be, uh, because as uh, as um, because of Igus's uh, story. Anyway, that's where we're going to end it. At, um, that's where we're going to end it uh, uh, today. Me, um, thank you all for. Uh, uh, Thank you for you all for coming. I'm sorry I couldn't get to a battle, but uh, with the new stream time, I can't and um, I can't stream too late and, 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 um, and because of because of circumstances. As, as, you're welcome, um, Robin. And so, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. And um, uh, please, please. Um, uh, uh, if you like me, if you like uh, um, uh, my uh, 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 my uh, stuff, uh, please uh, check me out on YouTube. I upload uh, all my streams there, uh, and soon I'll be able to vod. Uh, 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 soon I'll be able to vod out on Twitch too. At least try that out. But um, uh, I also have a Discord. Please check uh, me out there. Or um, uh, you can also uh, check me out on fa uh, on Facebook uh, and Twitter. Uh, let me uh, let me see who uh, we can raid to leave off. Star yet? Uh, looks like uh, where uh, um, uh, looks like uh, you're the one uh, being raided this time. Anyway, uh, uh, thank you all uh, all so much. Uh, 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 so much for watching. I'll see you all in, uh, in the next next one. This is Meta Velasquez signing out.